This little mini series is just about the topic of being fearful of playing the perfect game. So why am I asking that question? It's a topic that comes up quite often in the um, wonderful game of chess. So if I'm playing a player and um, they're playing outstandingly well and I don't get a look in or the position on the board looks really quite tight and they're really pulling out all the stops and they're finding these fantastical type places and positions for their pieces um, that you just I just don't think I can get in the game at all. In my head I go, well, this guy can't be, that, that's, they can't be human. You know, so then after the game, you know, if you take the loss or if you've taken a really hard draw or something, you quickly go on to the analysis and you, you're on there looking and you're checking straight away what, how did they perform? Is it zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders? And on the odd occasion, yeah, you'll find that it is zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders. So then you instantly throw your hands in the air and they go, ah, oh, well, they're using a computer. You can't, that was a perfect game. So you feel happy and content that you've, um, you feel like you've found a cheater. Okay, so that's fine. You've found a cheater. So you play your next games or a few games down the line. You're playing a game and you're playing out of your socks. You know, you're, you're, you're winning and you're blocking everything that the opponent's doing and you're feeling quite good about every position that you're, you've got on the board and you take a glorious win and you look back on the analysis or the opponent beats you to the analysis because they're asking the question and it says zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders for your part in that game. So now you sit there and you go, wow, I played an absolutely fantastic game with no mistakes, no blunders, no inaccuracies. I'm really good. So what's the difference between you playing your perfect game and your opponent playing a perfect game? There's two different emotions that will kick in. The opponent is obviously thinking that they played a perfect game. Your thinking you've played a perfect game without any assistance. So the opponent comes back to you and they say, well, I don't think that that was right. I think you were cheating. And you know you weren't. But how can you fight against that when you have delivered the perfect game? So why do we still continue playing the game of chess if the fear of getting the perfect game is going to actually ugly the waters of the beautiful art of chess. For me, personally, I enjoy the game. If there are zero zeros on there, I am so, I'm pleased, but I'm so wary. So the fear of playing the perfect game really does have a massive knock-on effect psychologically on your game if you're just starting out and you you know we're near getting like zero zeros um then you know nothing to worry about but as you're getting into the higher levels of play or yeah you're getting better so you're understanding the basics of chess so as you've developed your game if you're playing somebody who then does not utilize the skills required to deal with what's actually happening on the board. The element of if you take advantage of their indecisiveness and their inexperience and their lack of skill in at that moment in time, then it's going to be classed as not an inaccuracy, not a mistake or not a blunder. So your positions on the board are going to be fairly solid. 
that doesn't mean you are using an engine. Then there's the other side of the coin, as soon as they go on to the evaluation and look on the system, then it's about comparing the moves that the computer suggests to what you have done. Now I have a recent game that I, I have played, um, I got zero, zero, zeros on that game and I thought it was a fairly tough game and the opponent quickly did like a report analysis and I thought oh here we go and I got the shock of my life when I did see the zero, zero um, because I thought it was a fairly tough game but positionally um, the opponent did something strange with their bishop which I did think was a bit odd so obviously what am I going to do am I just going to leave the bishop or am I just going to take it or what I'll take you through that game just to highlight the little bit of concern that I have with the instant the instant stigma that you get when you get zero zeros so I'm going to take you through that game Okay, I'm going to keep the arrows on this particular game as well, so that you know this is what they do when you're doing the analysis. You go straight there, bang, and you're looking to see, well, did they make every move as like a computer type thing? So we played as white here, and we just push through the center. It's all pretty normal stuff, and we captured, and then just push through the center, just blocking the pawn, and bring the bishop out, looking to go and castle. So we castle, keep it nice and safe, steady, straightforward. Bring the bishop out, attacking the knight as we do. Just x-raying through to the bishop, through to the queen, as we do. And they bring their rook across. We develop the knight because we're wanting to develop pieces. We're wanting to put pressure onto this pawn here if this knight disappears. You know, that type of thing. You know, wanting to get the bishop out here, maybe touching onto here as well. But we want our pieces out. We don't want them stuck on the back. That's all basic stuff. So they push the pawn, so we bring the queen up now, so the queen is off the back, so we're linking up the rooks, so it's supporting the bishop as well. All simple, basic stuff. So they bring the knight through, so we bring our rook across, and now we want to move the bishop out of the way so we can hit their rook, but also looking to attack the weak pawn here, at the side of the king, if possible at some point. And they move the queen, so obviously we can see the diagonal coming through onto the pawn here. The knight's protecting at the moment. So we take the rook off the board, and they take with the knight. And now we bring the rook up, now owning the file. And they bring their knight down, so we bring our knight up, obviously looking for a lovely position. I mean, if the bishop takes, the pawn's taking, the pawn's going to be on the knight. So this is why we can bring the knight up into this position here quite nicely. So they bring the bishop down and we bring our queen across now looking to own more of this file with the queen and the rook. So the knight moves and we take the knight off the board and then this crazy kind of move happened here. So as you can see as we were going through it was a slow build up looking at the evaluation bar anyway. So from this point here, we're not doing anything miraculous at all. We're just positioning ourselves, trying to get ownership of this file. It's showing a slight advantage to us at the minute because we're doing slow incremental movements, trying to um, find the key squares, bringing the knight up, getting the queen across. So it's showing their slight advantage there, which is never here or there. It's minus 0.1. And then the knight comes across. It's like plus 0.1 again, never here or there. And then we grab and it's showing minus 0.1 so basically there's nothing there at all in that sense but this crazy move here what is that move meant to be doing i mean it's showing it's a massive blunder so what are you meant to do I move the king out of the way and the bishop goes and takes the knight so we can bring the queen up now because we're looking to attack this square because we've got support with the bishop looking to get a check on the king. So the pawn pushes down, and then at this point here, then we just grab the grab the bishop. As you can see, the computer suggesting different moves anyway. Yes, yeah, so it's attacking, bringing the rook up. 
we bring the queen down, attacking the bishop. Queen takes, and then we capture. And then we bring the rook up. Again, it suggested taking the knight with the bishop, but we haven't done that, obviously. So we take the knight there, and bring the knight around. Okay, so we need to get the knight into the game because the knight's not doing anything. So we'd seen that this knight could be jumping here to get into some sort of action, some activity somewhere. So the knight comes up, and we bring it up. As we said, we wanted to get it into the action somehow. Basically, maybe looking to get the rook here, or get a bit of a check on the king somehow. But they're not having any of that, so we grab, and the bishop can take now. So this is all pretty straightforward stuff now. But it's not finished, it's not over. It's plus 5.3, which is good for us. But we still have to jostle for position. So we moved the rook out of the way and then the opponent resigned at this point. So in this this game here, basically, we got 0, 0, 0. And the opponent got one inaccuracy, no mistakes and one blunder. So that's still quite a high performance. We were 97% and they were... 81 so yep this whole thing about looking at these zero zero zeros these performance things and and instantly thinking what well, the opponent must be using the computer seriously you have to look at the game yeah if every single move was like a computer move and it was following all the arrows of say stockfish or whatever other systems you they may use then yes, you can maybe ask a question, but if they're obvious moves, you know, if they're simple, basic, obvious moves that, you know, a, even, even a beginner could see, then really you've got to ask yourself as to what did you do in that game? What did you do wrong in that game? What was wrong with your position, your strategy, your plan, etc.? So the fear of getting a perfect performance really can kind of rock the boat of your own performance. You'll be fearful of making a move. So for my own peace of mind, I'm going to still try and make the perfect game because that's what we're all here trying to do. We're all here trying to improve our game of chess. So yeah, be mindful. If you get a zero, 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 and you've played true and you're honest to yourself, yeah, well, celebrate. And I'm taking this moment to celebrate this moment because as we saw in this particular game here, the game was given to myself because of a strange kind of movement. So this opponent has got to own the fact that they did this strange looking bishop type attack here on the pawn. I don't know what they thought that was building up to, but you've got to own what you do in the game or else you are going to give the opponent a high performing type of um, analysis. And that's it really at the end of the day. That's what the whole story is about for today, is that if you want to give your opponent a clean sweep and a good bill of health in, in their performance make moves that don't make any sense and then obviously you cannot then slag them off for using an engine or anything like that you have to look at your game you have to appreciate the fact that you made a blunder you made an error you made a miscalculation your strategy is not up to date your movements aren't right you're basically not using the answer you're providing a problem, but you're not providing the answer. But you put a lot of pressure on yourself when you, you say you're going to try and go for a perfect game because um, it doesn't really happen when you go looking for it. It happens because the opponent makes some type of erroneous manoeuvre, um, even if it's the smallest of errors or an inaccuracy or whichever. Um, and that's the type of thing that then gives your opponent that extra bit of performance data to say well the opponent did an inaccuracy um, they made a blunder they made a mistake you actually took advantage of it by 
just played solidly. Um, you didn't do anything fantastic, you just played solidly. Um, so you didn't make any mistakes, you didn't make any inaccuracies, you didn't make any blunders. doesn't mean that you were playing perfect, it just means you just played solidly and you played good basic chess. So to get a full understanding of what 000 actually means or a high percentage performing type thing, you have to look at the game in detail as to the movements that were made on the board, the advantages that were made, the disadvantages that were made, was basic chess being played? If basic chess was being played and one player just wasn't playing basic chess or they jumped outside of the box and thought, oh, I'm gonna try something fancy, but it didn't work, so the opponent made them pay the price for it by playing solid basic chess then that's not perfect chess that's just good basic chess okay so this is off of the back of um, the fear of playing the perfect game okay so <laughs> okay let's go with this Let's uh, see what we've got, and he's coming through the middle somehow, let's go here, and let's hit this, he's coming for the pawn. So this play has gone absolutely crazy, and we were just talking about, you know, the fear of playing the perfect game. So this opponent's coming out on, with a single attack with the queen, queen's going to do demolish quite a few pawns. Hopefully, well, it's not actually gone for the pawn. Well, he has gone for the pawn, but for it in a different way. All right, okay, that's throwing me off a bit. So we'll push this pawn here. So in, a, in, essence, in essence, the queen is out by itself at this moment in time. Now we're looking to try and improve our position, maybe go for a bit of demolition, just attack the bishop, make some space for our uh, king. So the knight's attacking the pawn here, so the knight takes this. So no, he's put a check on, and he's landed on there, but his queen has got a horizontal, so you have to be very careful of the horizontals. Yeah, so I'm going to bring the king up. So it's still protecting the bishop. So he's got two pieces out, but they're not really working as a team, I'm hoping. Oh, is that protecting? So, does that give us space to actually get into some action? I'm actually going to bring the pawn, smaller piece attacking a higher piece on the queen. This queen's jumping up like he knows where he's going. Maybe he's wanting us to come back again. He's just bouncing backwards and forwards. I'm hoping that's the case because then we're winning tempo in terms of moving. If he just goes back down again, yeah, okay. Let's just square up again with a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Let's get the knight up. Oh, too fast. Too fast. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, well, he's resigned anyway. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, dear me. <laughs> oh, I moved too quick then. I moved too quick. Oh, yeah, the bishop should have just taken it. He went back. And I'm just thinking, oh, he's going to come back. <laughs> Oh dear, that is funny. So yeah, that's definitely not the perfect game, but we got an advantage in the end. But if they'd have taken their time, what did we do? We pushed the, we brought the knight up, didn't we? If they'd taken their time, they would have got a bishop and a check on me. So that would have been quite horrible, really, wouldn't it? You know, where am I going next? I'm gonna have to go here. And looks like he's almost squishing me, I think. Is there anything? Squish, 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 squish. Knight's protecting here. Knight's not going anywhere else. His knight could jump here. Nope. There's not much going for it. No, no. Shall we put this on? I can't really see what, what he can do from there. Uh, so it's showing them the plus 
so it's actually developing the night out I don't really like playing against the computer okay yeah and that's pretty straightforward coming attacking the Queen here and the Queen is going to run away well, it was suggesting doing a castle there won't it the Queen's not going to get itself taken so attacking this pawn here but he's got two pieces on there like I said I don't like playing the computer um, probably look to get the knight up maybe blocking that off a bit so it's not finished but yeah that was an ugly game let's play another one <laughs> again it's off the back of fear of playing the perfect game and uh, let's just go here um, I think just bring the bishop out just wanting to try and create confusions in the middle um, could have taken that pawn you know that's okay. <clears throat> what do we got? Let's castle, keep it nice and steady. And just push. Let's attack the bishop. And capture. I think sometimes the simpler the game, the more stressed you give to the opponent because as simple as it is and you beat them simply it's like whoa how could you beat me you didn't even do anything complicated all right so it's going for a good missile let's just block that off that means they don't know what to do next so when you see those far flank things coming up <gasps> rook in the center of the board it has no place there let's just bring this back for a discover check on the rook so they must lose a bit of tempo i don't think they swing oh my gosh they're swinging it in <gasps> dear me it's attacking this pawn <laughs> what's he think he's doing let's go here it might work for them shall we swing this knight up there his knight's just gonna take you see so i'm trying to hold off of that i'm gonna go for it anyway let's just take Okay, so the rook is nicely in the center of the board. Did I just move it? Oh, okay, a bit late. Let's just push here. Be frantically moving back now. maybe not so what's he targeting is he going for the cheapy bishop coming here yeah so he's going for that all right um let's move the king keep it simple this queen's coming here as well i think they missed an opportunity again we're leaving pieces and they're not taking advantage but maybe he's going to take it now though yes okay but does that give them anything <clears throat> in reality he's got two on one here if we hit the rook then his rook's going to take here. Um, we can hit his queen. His queen's going to take the pawn. Uh, but his rook is by itself, so it'll be just an exchange in exchange. Yeah, let's do that. And we are a minor piece up as well. Unless, of course, my eyes are playing tricks on me. Let's take. Let's hit the rook again. He's thinking, he's probably going back here thinking, oh, I've got, I need to keep my rook in the game. So that happened very, fairly quickly. But we seem to be surviving these weird, yeah, look, he's gone back uh, running. So he's still on a white square. Rook can come up to come up. Or that square bishop can, can look to block here. Don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll give it a try. Let's just block the rook in. Maybe bring this here. Not too sure I'm going to be doing that though. So... Could block it in, but it's uh, going to get away there, isn't it? 
Think, think, think. One up. One up. Bring across. It's probably going to push this pawn down. And up we go. And he pushes it down again. Not bad for time. We're plus one at the moment. And we can move the rook because the bishop is on the pawn as well. But his rook is going to come here as well, isn't it? Well, it might be too late to the party. Let's go here. We've got three on there now. He wants to get this rook into the game. I have to be careful because there's a back rank if I do it wrong. My king's stuck in the corner. So if he does come, if we take, and he takes, we take. Yeah, we take, he takes, takes. Take. Not too sure, I think he's going to take here, but then he gets back ranked. There we go. Alright. So let's go. This could still end up being a draw. I've seen these types of things before where the bishop can't really do much. <laughs> let's um, get positioned. It's going to attack our pawn. Let's put a check on. It's going to drop it. Makes a bit of space. Let's bring the bishop back. Probably keep this king acting as a pawn against these pawns now. Maybe block this pawn. No, I can't block it anymore. Still act it as a pawn, like we said, against these. Oh, bishop's acting as a pawn. Okay, so... Let's go. Could have got that pawn off the board, you know. <laughs> okay. Let's push. It's coming around the Let's just push this onto here. So he's coming down, he's going to come down with this pawn, we take, okay, let's take, let's attack, and the seconds are running down. Positioning it does feel okay. I don't think there's any tricks, is there? Any pawn tricks? Let's take. This one's saved. Thought they've left the game. I think a masterclass needs to be done on the resignation button. So this is the last one in the fear of playing the perfect game series. So as we said before, oh, I think we're going to take this time. Um, as we said before, it's not a matter of let's go here. 
not a matter of the perfect game it's a matter of having good basics as far as i'm concerned if the opponent's doing something that so the knight's gonna get hit the opponent's doing something that is not quite right i'm actually hitting the bishop before the pawn pushes and you take advantage of it i'll say you're blocking their attempts at things let's go here or they just can't find let's castle or they just can't find what it is that they're wanting to do but you then see what it is that they're trying to do and you manage them well then that's got to be a plus he's making space for his queen is he that's got to be a plus for you as an individual am i coming back here for him to drop his knight here he's pawn there i don't think so let me see i want to do something with x-raying through to the queen keep it simple and basic let me focus now i'm not doing the narration thing now so the king's moved so that's almost like saying i don't really know what to do next doesn't it i'm gonna tap the bishop gone don't want to keep the knight on there but uh, we could come here because the bishop's got an extra through to the queen so if the knight does move we can take the queen uh, i'm gonna take so what's going on here with this knight now so i'm gonna have to take anna well i don't have to but i'm taking because the queen's come off of the x-ray is there anything with this queen coming here or is it too much queen coming here to attack here i'm going to bring the queen here it's opposite the king just to come here attack their queen yeah let's attack the queen i don't want to get caught up in anything it's ready to open up this and but that's not going to do much is it i don't think he's going to exchange i think the queen's coming back here or something Oh, exact spot all right so looks like we've got a bit of a challenge on get this knight back our knight's got this space here you do queen's target in there we don't have i'm going to bring the knight back out get it off here i think it's going to be needed and the rook's attacking the queen why am i not scared of that Let's go here. My knight's trapped. Ooh, get the knight here. Well, that's an interesting situation, isn't it? Let's go like this. So now their whole focal point is on attacking the king area, which is good. So he's not wanting our knight to get out. So I bring the knight around this way. He's going to start compounding pressure onto this pawn. That can open up our rook. We're facing their queen. That's quite an interesting, quite an interesting game. Okay, so he's moved the queen off the line, but he's tripled up. Knight can go and attack their queen. I think the queen will come here now, looking to put pressure on here, get this rook here. It's a sort of two on one situation ish. It's just that his rook can come here. Nice. Keeping that. All right, so this is uh, interesting. What about this rook opposite their queen? Yeah. If something kicks off. Time's running out. Well, it's okay. It's 2 minutes 35. That's not a problem. Rooks have no place in the center of the board. We need to be making them pay. He's giving us a 2 on 1. Let's take. I don't think he wants to exchange his queen though. He's, um, he's wanting to create something in front of the king. Where does he go? Is he going to come back here? He's taken. Let's grab. We're on the bishop. Bishop runs. Doesn't want any more pieces taken. Could attack the rook. Two. There's no two attack there. Um, ooh, this pawn is. Um, Tasty. This knight can't get in the game. Here, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. Knight can jump here, and we 
could defend or could just jump back again to the annoying position. No major fork there is the... Do we come back here? Or do we come here? I like this position, you know. I like it. I don't know why. I think I like this. Feels like the knight's not going to get much hassle being here. So momentarily plus one, but positionally, you'd probably give it to white, you know, in terms of, well, they've got opposition right in front of your king here. His pawn is still wanting to go. It's just, he's got his bishop pawn takes. Do, 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 do. Get the knight in. No, no, the knight's not going to work, is it? One minute thirty. Right, going to have to pull it out. Yeah, positionally they look a little bit better than us. I'm going to bring the knight here. As always, the knight can come back here, but I do, for some strange reason, I do like this position. I wonder if we're going to see the benefits of that. He's looking to take because the pawn can't take. It's going to move the king off the line. Okay. Is there anything? Oh, is there anything in this now? If he does take, knight takes, bishop takes, pawn takes. Or do we just bring the knight back? Quick, 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 quick. Right, if it was a bullet thing, I'd have just gone like that. We're in bullet time now. And just hope that it works out. <laughs> I don't care. Hope chess is fine by me. So it's going to obliterate all the pawn structure in front. Massive rook exchange potential, maybe. Or maybe I do want to lose the knight. Oh, oh, what's this? Is he coming in for the rook? Take it anyway, it's coming in for the rook, isn't it? Go here, attack his rook. Maybe not. Oh, we can't do that, can we? If he's there, we can't go there. We can go here, though. Taking some damage. Although we're still plus one. Oh, we're in the built bullet realm now. Oh, and the opponent's not, he's not wearing it. Oh, damn it, he's not, why is he not wearing it? Because I can't move. Oh, I can't move. Looking to double up with his rook. Yeah, he's doubled. Let's attack the rook. Now he's got no defense. This is defended. And where am I going? Oh, I'm going to lose some time. 21 seconds. Come on, 37. Come on, come on. Let's hit this rook again. And now we're defending our. Um, let's go here. Let's attack. 18 seconds. What's he got? He's got my king. Check. I can, I can feel it in the water. It's not done it. with a check he's got my pot no he's not okay hit the knight take let's hit the king let's push the pawn okay so that's that's the end of the fear of playing the perfect game uh, for me it's um it's a long long history a long story of looking at the performance of a game when you've lost 
and you see 0, 0, 0 and you imply straight away the opponent is using some type of engine um, but in essence if it's you that's done the 0, 0, 0 you're celebrating that you've actually performed a really good game but the reality is it's not the perfect game it's just a game where you've either played good solid basic chess or the opponent has made egregious errors or they've made the smallest of errors and you've taken advantage by playing solid basic simple chess